Hello everyone, and welcome back to another BAM repair video. Today, we're going to do a special retro review. We're going to replace the hard drive in an iMac G4 from 2002. This computer is 20 years old this March. Now we're recording our own process, but if you'd like to perform this repair yourself, we highly encourage you to look at the step-by-step -step guide from iFixit.com for more in-depth instructions, especially for a more complicated repair like this one. Link in the description. The tools we'll be using today include a Phillips number zero screwdriver, a T15 Torx screwdriver, a T10 Torx screwdriver, and a replacement IDE hard drive. Additionally, you could also use new thermal paste for the CPU, but it's not required. Before we begin, we make sure that the computer is shut down and completely unplugged from the wall. Then we lay the screen face down on a soft surface like a cloth or some bubble wrap like this. We're going to use our Phillips head first to undo the four screws on the bottom plate. These are captive screws, so they don't actually come out and they can stay on the plate once they're loosened. Right here are the RAM and the airport upgrade slots. We can ignore those, get our T15 Torx screwdriver and start working on these next four screws. Now these ones are pretty long, so they take a little bit. Once the screws are removed, it's time to take the base of the computer off. This part requires a bit of patience. We're going to pull straight away from the computer to remove the bottom piece. There are still cables attached inside though, so make sure to pull straight and pull gently. Do not pull it at an angle because you may break or snap fragile components inside. Once the bottom is separated, you'll notice that the logic board is actually located in this bottom piece, and there are four connection points just to the right of the DVD drive. There's a rigid piece that should have disconnected once the bottom came away, a colorful power cable, a small plug for the airport card, and a wide gray and blue IDE cable. There is also a large, thick black cable that attaches to the middle of the logic board. This does not come off, so we will leave it alone. We carefully disconnect the power, airport, and IDE cables, taking care to pull upwards on the black and blue plastic, not pulling on the wires themselves. This step isn't required, but it can make working inside the computer more easy. Next, we take a look at the bottom of the DVD drive. There's a drive guard with some copper tape at the front. Using our T10 screwdriver, we unscrew it and carefully remove the copper tape. The drive guard may bend, but it can be easily bent back into shape, so don't worry. There are four additional T10 screws that need to be removed around the drive. We remove them, then grasp both sides of the drive. To remove it, it must be pulled straight out. This can be tough, so take your time. Sometimes wiggling it back and forth can help. Also, take care to make sure there are no cables wrapped around the outside of the drive, so they are not snapped when you pull it out. We slowly pull the DVD drive out of the frame. There is no hard drive currently in this computer, but if there was, it would be screwed into the frame on top of the DVD drive. We would then use our T10 screwdriver to unscrew it, pull it out, and disconnect the IDE and Molex power cables. Again, make sure you pull on the plastic, not on the cables themselves. Now we take our replacement hard drive. This computer uses an older protocol than the SATA that modern storage drives use, called IDE. We'll plug the IDE and then the Molex power connectors in and set the drive back into its frame. Now before you put the computer back together, make sure to double check the jumpers on your disk drive and your hard drive. IDE uses a protocol called master-slave, where one device is identified as the master and the other is a slave. You cannot have two masters or two slaves, so we made sure that our hard drive was the master and the disk drive was the slave. This is done using a small white jumper on this section of the IDE connector. Now we just assemble the machine the way we came in. We carefully and patiently tuck the drive back into place. Then we screw all of the T10 screws back and reattach the drive guard. We then make sure all of the cables are plugged back into the motherboard, if we unplugged them, and line it up correctly. It's not required, but we recommend re-upping the thermal paste as well on the G4 CPU. It's a little different than most computers due to the narrow, long heat sink over top of it. Thermal paste actually goes right here, where the heat sink touches the metal frame inside the computer to dissipate heat. Then we carefully and gently press the computer's frame back together. After firmly reattaching the base, we screw the four T15 screws back in and then reattach the bottom plate with its four Phillips screws. And we're finished! Our G4 just needs the software installed, and it's back in working order. If you enjoyed this video, or it helped you in any way, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And visit us online at bamliquidation.com.